Hey everybody, it's uh, Sage Valentine, aka Etherblade here, and you're watching my review of Hannibal Season 2, Episode 2, Sakizuki. I really need to look up that word, because I tried looking it up earlier, and the episode kept coming up, and there were all these spoilers, and I'm like, I don't want to know, I just want to watch the episode, no, 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 no. Alright, here we go. The gentleman from the last episode, he gets free, he breaks out, and in freeing himself, ends up taking off some of his skin off his body. We realize that not only is he fused together by whatever it is on the skin, but everybody is sewn together. So he basically has to rip chunks of skin off of his face and his shoulders and even off his back just to free himself. He breaks out, breaks through the gate. It feels like with him breaking that lock, like it was meant for him to break in because the man just appears out of nowhere. This truck appears when he's coming out. So this is my thing. I think that maybe he... Maybe I'm 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 looking too far, like I'm too far fetched, but it feels like he was set up either that or maybe like they said he has a tolerance to these drugs because they were saying in later in the episode that he had been an addict and he has a high tolerance for drugs. So maybe like I said, because I thought to myself as well, I was like, does he does he have a high tolerance or something for drugs or something? Because sometimes you give people drugs, um, some people can get on it, get off of it, but some people are stuck on it, so maybe he was able to, you know, tolerate it. And since they said that he, what did they say? They said that he, um, he was a recovering addict. This is probably why he woke up. He finally made it. He hid in a car, ran through some corn, and he made it to the edge of a cliff where he ended up having to jump down, bumped his head on like a little ledge, and then hit his head on the rocks and floated away. And this is how he was found by the FBI. The FBI gets involved in this, and Hannibal's here, and it's like Hannibal, to me, seems more uh, intrigued by the killer more than even the, um, the crime itself, even finding the body. He, like, attributes the body as being a dandelion or something, saying something about dandelions and all this other crazy stuff. Um, but I think I'm getting, um, ahead of myself. Will says, I am the plot. I am the unreliable narrator of my own life. In other words, he he is in the middle of this murder in this case, but he can't remember a damn thing that happened, and he doesn't know what is going on. Um, Dr. Bloom believes that no one is at fault, but they need to find the truth. Dr. Bloom, to me, I thought she was on Will's side. She kind of is, but then she's a little bit skeptical. But in the same sense, she knows that Will may be put to death, so she's trying to, to scrape together pieces so that she can save his life. Because at this point, Will's going down either way, because he really can't prove that Hannibal was even a part of this. Um, other than what he remembers, he can't really prove it. There's nothing really to prove, so... Okay, um, Will feels like he was betrayed, betrayed by Hannibal. Hannibal wants to help him, but in helping him, as you've seen before, Hannibal will help him and then probably bury him deeper. He says that Will needs the help. Um, or Will says that he needs the help for everyone starts crying. They put him in his cell. And he kind of starts hallucinating a little bit. We don't get to see his hallucinations. Um, Hannibal gets a visitor, which is Dr. Um, Dumer, Bedelia Dumer, and she basically tells him, you know what, I'm done with this. I don't want to be your psychiatrist anymore. In other words, she knows that Hannibal's done something, so is somehow involved in this case with Will, and I guess she can't live with herself. She can't handle it. She says she reached her limit of efficacy. In other words, she can't even deal with this. Like She's like, listen, you're dangerous. I'm out of this. And Hannibal's like trying to intimidate her by walking forward, and she's walking backwards, and she just gets out of it. Hannibal said he's going to help Will because Will asks for his help. And she says, well, maybe you two deserve each other. I think that, too, because Will's skeptical of Hannibal. He knows Hannibal did something. He saw what he saw last episode, but he still wants Hannibal's help. And I'm wondering, does he want Hannibal's help because he wants his help? Or does he want his help to see where Hannibal's head is at? So maybe Hannibal will slip. Maybe. So, um... Like I said, they find Roland's body, who's the boy who, the man who fell, hit his head, and is floating in the water. Hannibal calls him a dandelion and says, like, 
he floated through the water like a dandelion seed. And they said that it, his skin looks like cracked. And it's like the cracks in the paintings are um, not always weaknesses. There's something more within the cracks. Look within the cracks. Hannibal knows that Beverly's been talking to Will because she mentions that the killer sees color like a color palette. Jack didn't know this and Jack's all upset over this and kind of pissed. And um, he's just a little bit upset about it. And he basically says to Beverly, you know, Will is a psychopath and delusional. He thinks that Will is innocent under the microscope. But he's innocent. In fact, no, he doesn't exactly say he's innocent. Beverly is like, you know he's innocent, you're just not saying it. Um, Jack feels like he's under the microscope and he needs a psych evaluation, according to Cynthia Nixon's character, who is, I forget her job title, but she basically says that he needs a psych evaluation to prove if he should even keep this job. I'm like, what the hell does any of that have to do with it? But she's a lady on a mission. Um, do whatever it is you believe. Do whatever it is you believe is your job to do, but I didn't say to do this. In other words, he's telling Beverly, because Beverly's like, listen, should I go and ask for um, Will's help? Because you know you wanted to get his help. You just didn't do it, and I did. Jack basically tells her to do what you want, but I didn't say it. Don't say I said to do this. Hannibal looks into the um, victim rolling skin and sees the cornfield, sees um, corn around him. It's like outside with the body with plastic on. Like this weird plastic suit thing. That's actually kind of cool looking, to be honest. Um, when he realizes the truth, he shuts off the light. In other words, when he realizes what's going on, that's exactly what he does in the show. Like, he shuts everything off, and he's like, he didn't see anything, in other words. Hannibal goes to visit Will, and he stays behind the line because some of the prisoners have been peeing on their therapist. Will sees friendship as a symmetrical relationship, but sees the relationship between the therapist and the patient as unbalanced. Will threatens Hannibal with a reckoning because Hannibal, he did last week because Hannibal mentioned it again. Will saw the killer in the picture stitching the people together, making a mural. Mm -hmm. And each body is the brushstroke. That's his idea of what this killer is doing. And he knows that he's being recorded by Dr. Chilton. He tells Beverly when Beverly comes to visit him, I want you to ignore the evidence against me and start over. Like, clear your mind and let's focus on this case together rather than you worrying or thinking like you're speaking to this psychopath and I'm the killer. That's the way I took it. Um, he says, start over. If I'm guilty, you'll find more about me. And if I'm not, if I'm, I'm not guilty, you'll know why I'm not guilty. In other words, pay attention to what the hell's going on. I'm giving you clues. Beverly watches Will... Turn his back to look at the pictures because he wanted to look at it alone, but she basically wouldn't leave the room, so he had to do it basically with her in the room. And he sees, he starts drifting off in his mind and sees the body before him. And he wonders why the body isn't discolored as the other bodies. Why throw the body away? Roland had a high tolerance of operatives or opiates, as I said, and he tore himself away or free and ran like i said he got away he's somewhere near water a warehouse and a farm and he asked her you know what did hannibal have to say beverly said that hannibal thought that the killer threw away the body he said no what did not what he said what was he thinking beverly had no clue we see hannibal in a plastic suit he makes his way on top of one of these drum things that the killer put the bodies in he looks down, sees the killer, and says, hello, I love your work. That scene threw me off, because I was like, what the hell's Hannibal doing out there doing something? And I guess he admires this person's work, and I'm like, who is he going to help him out? Hannibal and Beverly appear at the crime scene later, because apparently um, Hannibal left, and I guess he's acting like he wasn't there before. Um... He, Beverly explains that the reason they found this area is because they listened to Will and followed the water and made it to the cornfield. Hannibal asks what it looked like from above, I guess, like, what type of vision was this killer trying to get? Meanwhile, Jack is wondering what makes a human being so bad, and Hannibal attributes that to something having to do with being born in a situation that you can't control. He says this could be his beginning or his end. He uses, he uses 
these bodies to do what he is driven to do. The world feels much darker. I don't know, in fact, he uses the bodies to do what he's driven to do. And that's the exact same quote that Jack says to the, um, to the shrink, who I recognize him from that show, Boss. He looks so familiar. He's been in a bunch of different shows, but Boss, I remember him the most in that show. I miss that show. It was a really good show. Um, he uses, like I said, he uses Will to do what he's driven to do. The world seems much darker. He was pushed Will, and he feels like he failed. He's failing to reconcile that he sees his friend as a killer. We're told that John Doe 21 is Rowan Umber's replacement. Rowan Umber is the young black man who died, who fell off the, um, who jumped down off the cliff. Dr. Lecter took the replacement's leg and is sitting there cooking it with, like, mandarin oranges and pomegranates. I'm like, him and, and Hannibal and those weird, um weird strange different recipes is like crazy like he loves those weird recipes strange he wanted this to be a reflection some type of reflection that's the way that this killing was dr Le like i said is cooking and he makes like a roast of leg i call it a uh, leg of man instead of leg of lamb i made a joke dr bedelia du moyer says uh she goes to see Jack. She doesn't want a part of this. She knows that Hannibal has done something, but she can't give any more insight. She's like, she can't help him unless she feels emotionally secure. So she's trying to pull herself away from this, basically, because she's getting the feeling, in my eyes, that Hannibal did this, and Hannibal's trying to cover his own behind. So she has unresolved issues about the patient attack that she and Hannibal went through when they were attacked by the patient. And she wants, I guess, to deal with those. And she knows that the FBI will contact her, but she wants to stay out of that. Will feels like he's being burnt out every time Hannibal and Beverly keep coming, like it's going to burn him out from his trial or something. He takes a look at the pictures. He starts to think about what happened. And he says the last image fixed on a dying eye, something that I think Hannibal mentions. Will finds himself standing in the middle of the pallet. And he's speaking as though he's the killer, saying, I made you pliable, molded, set, and sealed you for display. Dead eye. He's like, basically, this is a dead eye. I am fixed and unseeing unless someone else sees me. Now, he's not saying this to anybody else. He's saying it to himself, and we're just sitting there listening, trying to, you know, we're trying to figure out what the hell is he talking about. So, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. And then it occurs to him. To look up and he sees Hannibal with the antlers on and he realizes Hannibal was a part of this. Hannibal took whomever was the killer and Hannibal prepared him and added him to this. So he says to himself, the killer was sewn into his own mural. Someone took a piece of him as a trophy. And he tells them that rather than saying Hannibal did it. We see Hannibal and we are given a flashback of Hannibal sitting there with that plastic suit on preparing this man and shooting him up with all this stuff well we don't see him shooting him up but he obviously did because the man can't even move the man's telling him there is no God Hannibal says God gave you a purpose to create and if God is looking down don't you want to be looking back up at him Katie Purnell comes to see Will that's Cynthia Nixon Miranda from Sex in the City she really has nothing to say other than saying that you know Dr. Bloom is trying to find him innocent and that he's a murderer and he conspired to the neurologist and make an alibi and she killed him. Some deluded thing that she came up with, which honestly doesn't make any sense because her character really, to me, makes no sense. It's nothing against the writers, but her character is just one of those egomaniacal people that just wants things their own way and doesn't see the logic in anything. And it's crazy. Um... Will basically tells him, this is not my performance you're watching. In other words, I didn't do this, so don't put all this on me. Someone else did this, but I'm not going to say who it is because none of y'all are going to believe me. He said, I guess I have to save my own life. And then once again, he's standing in the middle of the water with the fishing gear on, fishing, and there's bodies floating back like fish floating through the water. Bedelia Dumer goes to visit Will. She, she reminisces about him because Hannibal has talked so much about him. She wanted to see him in person before she finally just cut all ties. She There's a line, that same stupid line that they don't want anybody to cross. She moves forward, and even though all these people are yelling her to, ma'am, please back up, please back up, she won't listen. 
She goes forward, goes to his ear through the bars, and says, I believe you, and then she snatched away. And in the end, you see Hannibal walking into Bedelia's um, office. Everything is covered up with, like, um, sheets and stuff. I don't know if he went there trying to find her, trying to kill her. I don't know if he killed her already. Not even sure. All I know is that he's wearing this plastic suit. He sees a bottle of perfume, and the last thing they tell us is the conclusion, in her words, is the conclusion I have drawn is that you are dangerous. This episode was really good, and it is setting this season up to be pretty awesome. I'm loving it. Yes, like McDonald's, I'm loving it. I'm loving this season. I adore it. It's great. It's even better than last season. That says a lot for a show that was about to be canceled over some crap with NBC. I don't remember what it was, but they were talking about canceling this show, and I was like, how do you cancel a good show? Here's just a quick... Um, my review of this show is that hopefully Bedelia is alive enough to, you know, what find out what the hell Hannibal did but stay off his radar. I wish we could see more in Dr. Bloom and see exactly what she's trying to put together. Hannibal is hiding in plain sight, but Jack knows Hannibal did something Hannibal shouldn't have done. Beverly's piecing things together and she's becoming more aware of this, but I hope by the end of the season nothing happens to her. Um... Will is starting to see war things and piece it together, and Hannibal can see that. So, in the next episode, they're talking about Hannibal being on a stand. So, I'm wondering, is Hannibal going to do something to throw a monkey wrench in that? And the final thing is with um, Michael Pitt. Michael Pitt is supposed to be appearing in this season. If you don't know who Michael Pitt is, if you've ever seen the movie Murder by Numbers, it was Ryan Gosling and the other kid who was really crazy. Well, he wasn't as crazy, but he basically did what Ryan Gosling wanted him to do. That was him. Um, I can't wait to see what he's going to be, because I know he's going to be another crazy killer and probably coming pretty soon. So, Like I said, this episode is pretty badass. And I'm looking forward to next episode. It's going to be great. So hopefully you guys, like I said, had a kick-ass Saturday or Saturday. Friday and enjoy the last few minutes of this day and have an awesome weekend and I'll see you guys again for The Walking Dead and the following that I'm going to do on Monday, possibly into Tuesday. And um, just thanks for tuning in and definitely subscribe. I'd love to have more subscribers and I just, to all my subscribers so far, thanks guys and I hope you're enjoying my brand of crazy and if you want to contact me on social media at sagevalentinetwitter.com. The truth is on WordPress. I hope you can handle it on Blogger. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. So, Sage Valentine, signing out. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>